my name is Sarah Ruff. I'm so glad you're joining me today because we are finishing up chapter 15 on the topic of the resurrection. We're gonna find out how are the dead raised? What kind of bodies do we have when we are raised? Look at it in verse 35. But some will say, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they have when they come? Look at Paul's response. Foolish one, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. So Paul is saying right now, before something comes to life, it's got to die first. There's got to be death. And as for what you sow, you are not sowing the future body, but only a seed. Perhaps that of wheat or another of grain. So his second concept is you don't sow the future body. You sow only a seed. Verse 38, but God gives it a body as he wants. So God gives that seed of the body he wants to give it. And to each of the seeds, its own body. Don't miss what what Paul is teaching here. Verse 39, not all flesh is the same flesh. There is one flesh for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is different from that of the earthly ones. We get that. There are earthly bodies. There are heavenly bodies. The heavenly bodies have more splendor than the earthly ones. There is a splendor of the sun and another of the moon and another of the stars. For star differs from star in splendor. Where is Paul going with this? Look at it. Verse 42. So it is with the resurrection of of the dead. When the people of Christ are resurrected at Christ's second coming, there will be different splendor given to these bodies, to the bodies. Let me read to you Daniel 12 verse 2. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to eternal life and some to shame and eternal contempt. Look at it. Those who are wise will shine like the bright expanse of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I'm going to read to you Matthew 13 verse 43. I'm going to begin actually reading in verse 40. It says, Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will gather from His kingdom everything that causes sin and those guilty of lawlessness. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then... Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone who has ears should listen. Do you see that? When the dead is resurrected, we're going to have bodies with different splendor. Look at it. Verse 42, sown in corruption, buried in corruption, raised in incorruption. Sown in dishonor or buried in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown in weakness, buried in weakness, raised in power. Sown a natural body. When we are buried, we will be buried in our natural bodies, but we will be raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body, okay? So if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. 
So it is written, the first man, Adam, has become a living being. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. So we have our natural bodies first. We will be buried in our natural bodies, but be raised in our spiritual bodies. Verse 47, the first man was from earth and made of dust. Speaking of Adam, he was the first man from the earth and made of dust. The second man, Jesus, is from heaven. Like the man made of dust, so are those who are made of dust. Like the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. Verse 49, And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so we will also bear the image of the heavenly man of Christ. Brothers, I tell you this, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Okay, we have a problem here. Look at look where Paul's going with this. He kind of changes his kind of changes topics here. He says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Look at it. Verse 5. I mean, verse 51, listen, I am telling you a mystery. A mystery is something that has not been made known until now, and it can only be revealed by God. So he says, listen, I'm telling you a mystery. What is it? Paul says, we, look at that word, we. Paul is talking about himself, we and the Corinthian church, look at it, we will not all fall asleep. Paul says we won't all die, but we will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead, that those who have been buried, the dead will be raised in incorruption. And we, Paul includes himself because he doesn't, he believes that he is going to be on the earth alive when Christ returns. Do you see what he's saying? He says, we who remain, we who are here on the earth, we haven't had a chance to die. We haven't been buried in our natural bodies so that we could be raised a spiritual body. We haven't been buried in our corruption to be raised in incorruption. We're still on the earth, but he says, don't worry. We're going to be changed too in the twinkling of an eye at the trumpet. Why? Verse 53, because this corruptible must be clothed with incorruptibility. And this mortal must be clothed with immortality. This mortal who can die has to be clothed with immortality, the inability to die. Verse 54, now, now when, look at it, when this corruptible is clothed with incorruptibility and this mortal is clothed with immortality, when this happens, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? He's quoting Isaiah 25, 8. And when this occurs, when death is swallowed up by victory, when there is no more death, this occurs at the great white throne judgment. Uh, John sees death and Hades thrown into the lake of fire. And just right after there, that, he sees then the new heaven and new earth where there is no more death, no more crying, no more pain. Verse 56. Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I love that. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the, our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not for nothing because there will be a resurrection of the dead. All right, next week we are going to finish out our study of 1 Corinthians. We're going to be in chapter 16, and we're going to hear Paul's final words to the Corinthians. I'll see you then.